So this is my first time I'm doing anything like this on my channel, which I'm really excited for. Uh, this is definitely something I, I want to do more of. I love talking to other people about their, their kind of witchy journeys and so on. I hope you guys are all having an amazing, amazing day. Um, but yeah, today I am joined by the incredible Hey Shady Lady, who is an awesome and talented content creator here on Twitch, as well as YouTube and other various social media platforms. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm Hey Shady Lady. I'm a variety content creator on Twitch and YouTube. I do a lot of Twitch tutorial videos over on my YouTube, but I also am starting to tiptoe into like witchy tutorials and stuff. Um, I do a ton of, I've been doing tarot. I'm a practicing tarot reader for um, 10 years now, since about 2011, 2012. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm like an eclectic witch since this, I know this is more like a witchy channel. So I'm like all kind of all over the place. Uh, definitely, you would probably say I like focus in like digital and glamour magic, um, if anything, and moon magic too. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as my Twitch channel, I've been doing a new series called Midnight Study Sesh where we're deep diving esoterica, uh, specifically esoteric symbolism in the, tar the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. And kind of trying to uncover all the hidden secrets of uh of the the tarot so uh yeah <laughs> yeah that's been so much fun i've been really enjoying those streams i'm glad it's always a good time <laughs> so i guess starting off first what got you into spirituality like what what piqued your interest in in this realm of the unknown <laughs> so um growing up um i grew up in the bible belt uh so i was i was growing up around like like Christian, you know, like a lot of that kind of thing. So I was very, I was very atheist growing up. I, I well, to start with, I was going to like vacation Bible school, and I had a lot of fun because um, I got to ride a horse, and they paid me because I was really good at memorizing things. So I would go up and like recite the Ten Commandments or recite Bible verses, and the the pastor or whatever they were called would slip me like a dollar bill, and I was like eight years old, being like candy money. Um, so it, I and I had a lot, I had a lot of fun with that. But then the older I got, um, around twelve, thirteen you know, once I started like individual teenage brain, um, I started being like, hold up, half of this stuff doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I became atheist. Um, and then I eventually, um, I want to say around like 18 or 19, I start, I personally, this is my own personal belief. So if you're atheist, don't take it personally. But, um, I started to feel that being atheist was a very, um, pretentious viewpoint. Like how could I possibly say that I know for sure what is and isn't. So I discovered agnosticism and I became agnostic. And then when I was 22, I did a bunch of psychedelics and I realized that, wait a second, I am God. <laughs> there is a God and I'm God and you're God and we're all God. Um, and so I, I did a whole bunch of psychedelics in my early twenties. Um, you, you name it, I probably did it as far as psychedelics go, except for ayahuasca, which not trying to, not trying to literally die. So I probably will never, but um, yeah. So it, that, I mean, I completely transformed as a human after that physically too. I ended up losing like a hundred pounds within a year of that too, but, um, internally and externally, yeah, such uh, a transformation. I struggled a lot with, um, I understanding what was reality anymore, um, because I was so like, uh, floated away, um, that it took a long time for me to, to come back down to earth and, and accept what reality was, accept what, what it meant to exist and that I had to work. I had to clean. I had to, you know, do all these mundane things. Ground just, yourself oh, again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, there was just so many, so there was a handful of experiences that happened during, during the, the psychedelic moments that I, it was undeniable to me that there is something bigger at play. Um, and I felt, I touched, I talked, I was one with whatever it was. And I came out of it. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say this, but this is a sentence I've said forever. It was the most real thing I've ever experienced in my life was, was being in that space on psychedelics. So gotcha. everything That's else so now feels like dream world. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. it feels like I'm just simulation. cosplaying down here. Yeah. Simulation. <laughs> I'm in a video game and the point is eventually going back, like returning to that space. But, um, that is what my spiritual awakening was all about. And I went from being agnostic or atheist to like, uh, I don't have any kind of denomination mm -hmm. or anything at all, but I, I know for sure that there is there's there's something. something. So I guess going, would yeah. that still be in the sphere of agnosticism, I guess? No, nah, because agnosticism no. to me, and, and I mean, I'm not like mm -hmm. a, a dictionary about it, but what agnosticism means to me is like, 
I, I don't think there's anything, but I don't know that there's nothing. Okay. I don't, I, I don't think, I don't believe in, I don't think there's a God. I don't know if there's a God. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There might be something, but I don't know. And for yeah. me, I'm like, there's definitely something. I just don't know exactly what to call it, okay. but I'm studying to try to figure yeah. that out. And I do think I, like with, with midnight study session, I do think a lot of what, um, what we're digging into with that, like the, the Egyptian mythology, the Greek and Roman mythology, mm. uh, ancient Sumerian mythology, tying it in with astrology, looking at the Christian symbolism and stuff and how that's kind of been warped out of paganism and stuff like that. I, all of it is telling the same story to me, which is the answer. It is, it is, you know, no, so yeah, Sorry, my stopped working for Uh-oh. a second. We're good now though. <laughs> Okay, that should be good. Um, but yeah, the this learning the synchronicities of like um, mythologies and past cultures and belief systems and things like that is always so fascinating to me. Mm. Um, I, that's one of the reasons why I'm like absolutely loving the midnight study sessions. It's like, ooh, all, diving back into all this stuff it's that I used to research like it's forever a never ago. Ending rabbit hole. Yeah, <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> I mean, and some people devote their whole lives to, to scholarship in this area, right? Well, and so... that's what I've been, like, I mean, I've been like this since I was a teenager, really. Um, it's always been one of my favorite subjects. I just have re- I researched it from a different perspective as a teenager. Mm-hmm. Um, and in my early 20s, I deep dived again. And then for about five years in my mid-20s, I was like, I'm, <laughs> I just want to play video games. I want to watch anime. I want to be, I'm going to be normal again. Yeah. I'm not worried about any of this stuff. Everything's fine. Everything's normal. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to be a normal human. Um, and normal human. <laughs> now it's like I'm having to train myself to be okay with exploring it again. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had to do this so many times throughout my life. Like in my early 20s, to like right after the first, like the tri- like the the psychedelic journeys and all of that, I was just fully awakened to the injustice in the world, and mm-hmm. and I I went down a very much like fuck the government kind of <laughs> you know uh, thing, and so I I convinced myself that there was no time for video games or anime or mm, or fun there's bigger or problems that you have I need, to why, wake up everybody why are we just existing look at all of this horrible things mm. that are happening and i was like that for a long time like years and years and years um and i had to train myself to be okay with having fun again or train myself to be normal again um and come back down to earth a little bit and now i'm having to train myself to be okay like it, it's like i'm constantly and always seeking some kind of balance between all of these different like uh, expanses the way that i'm experiencing and expressing in the world like mm-hmm. i'm either a, a die hard anime fan and that's my entire identity or i'm a die hard like have you talked to our Lord and Savior 420? Because uh, it'll open your mind and your third eye will bloom, like or whatever, like 420 lightly. But uh, like I'm, I'm either one or the other, and now I want to be all the of them, best, like at the yeah, same time. The I want to integrate combination. everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool and fascinating. So I guess, like, how would you describe your your current? We we talked about this a little bit, but your um your current spiritual path. Um, I believe it. You call mm. yourself a witch, right? Like that is uh the descriptor yeah. that you use. Um, I guess like what what's like the the current pillars of your your practice and or your belief spiritually. Hmm. I guess like I guess out of everything, it's like I guess like manifestation. Like okay. I, guess, I guess that's what I would say. Like that's my main practice. I'm not much for like um, potions and rituals, to be mm-hmm. honest. And I had a, a weird experience the one time I tried to do like a ritual, and it it uh, triggered some mental issues that I struggle with. So I was like, okay, clearly you want to share about. I could. I just you don't I have just, to if you don't want to. Of I, I could. I don't mind. I just, I've talked about it before. I just I. Yeah, it's it I sh- it has a lot to do with my mental health issues too. So it um it was specifically okay, I guess we'll just dive into it. Um it was Samhain uh 3 or 4 years ago and I'd never done like a ritual. I'm I'm by all intents and purposes except for like my knowledge I'm a baby witch. Like I don't do potions. I don't do like when it comes to like, practicing actual witchcraft. Yeah, yeah, that type of witchcraft. Yeah, I'm. Um, I I do call myself a witch because I don't know what else to call myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I certainly am surrounded by crystals and um, I use uh, natural remedies and herbal remedies and stuff. But I'm not like brewing up potions out of it. Um, but that being said, you 
maybe I am because it's like certain teas mix in with certain mm-hmm. other things. Like, yeah, tea is um, definitely just an edible potion. <laughs> but I, I don't sit and like mindfully stir eight times counterclockwise mm. and you know that okay. like, I don't I don't, you don't do have that stuff ritual like that. spell work um, in your in your practice n- no um and not I, it's just not for me I guess like it's mm-hmm. never something that I've been super drawn to um but I do like the mindfulness behind it and the intention setting behind it and those are gotcha. things that the mindfulness and intention setting are certainly parts of my like daily mm-hmm. practices um but not to like such a focused point and maybe if I focused a little better I might have some better results but um yeah uh so I was dabbling I guess we'll say which is why I'm like hesitant because it's like I would want to encourage people to I don't know don't google rituals and then just try to do what you Mm. see on google like it's I guess it's but I don't know. I do struggle with mental health issues. And like I said, I've done a lot of psychedelics that, that kind of created an ungrounded space in my mind. Um, I, I struggle with like, um, I don't want to use specific words just for the sake of whatever, but, um, or specific like labels, but I had a very hard time for, for a long time in my early twenties telling the difference between reality and delusion. Um, and I, I thought that everything was a dream world for a very long time. I didn't believe anybody around me was real. Um, I thought everybody was dream characters and they were trying to trick me. I mean, I was like, you know, some of my friends at the time, I was like quizzing them like, (laughs) okay, I, who, I, I know that you're a dream character. So you have to tell me something that I couldn't possibly know about you what's your middle name and then my friend like said a middle name and I was like no I probably could have seen your driver's license at some point like subconsciously like remembered your middle name so that's not good like I was I was like straight up like did not believe anybody was real around me and there was no convincing me of it so that kind of ungrounded delusional mindset is what came I think now it's been years since then, but it came out during this like ritual. What it, what it looked like was I created a circle and a space. I was just doing tarot readings. It was 3 a.m. Samhain, full moon, peak of the energy, right? Um, and I was like, this is a great time for me to do my baby's first ritual. Um, and uh, so I created a circle. First. <laughs> I created a circle and I had made like, I had my tarot spread ready to go and I had like candles lit at the four corners. I was specifically calling on the elements, ancestors, mm-hmm. sky, earth, all of this kind of like, and, um, so this is why I was like so confused. Cause I was like, maybe one of my ancestors is just a dick. I don't know. <laughs> um, Cause that's possible. the thing is like when I call on my ancestors, who the hell am I calling on? I have mm-hmm. no idea. Like, I really don't know who my ancestors are. I know yeah. my great, great grandparents to a certain degree, but that's it people from from a thousand years ago they could have been like a serial killer for all i know like i have no idea Mm -hmm. um so i was sitting in front i've got this huge mirror it's like three feet wide and it's like seven feet tall um and i used it a lot when i was doing yoga and dance a couple of years Mm -hmm. ago and i've just never been it's i love it i'll never get rid of it um and uh i would i would be shattered if it if it shattered but um (laughs) i was sitting in front of that there's not really a choice for me to do anything but sit in front of it Mm because i have such a small room um and i was doing i had music on i had incense the whole shebang like and i was smoking a little bit you know like i was like i was like in the zone (laughs) i was fully immersing myself and i was like doing the tarot spread and i was like trying to like intuitively like channel bring energy in like be open to like like whatever kind of intuitive messages i was getting and i start to like i can't you know every now and again i would be like glancing in the mirror and at a certain point like Behind me on the wall, I had a hook that I hung my jean jacket off of, and the jean jacket just hung, like, limp and normal looking. And I would look in the mirror, like, at a certain point, I started looking in the mirror, and it looked like there was something inside the jacket, like it was filled out with a body, if that makes sense. But there was no legs or anything like that. It just, Ooh. and I, I was looking at it really confused and I was like, that's not what it's supposed to look like. And then I would, I turned around and looked behind me and it's just hanging limp and normal. And I would turn back and look in the mirror and it looked like there was something like it was looking different in Mirror's the mirror. Than always it always freak me out. I could not have like a mirror looking at me at night. I just, it's I can't have doors open night. either. I'm really weird about it's stuff. On, but... It's on the other side of the room, so it gotcha. doesn't it it doesn't shine on my my bed at all. Okay. Um, I'm, yeah. I, <laughs> so I that I and I started getting kind of freaked out. Um, 
so I, I remember, and I think I like broke the circle or something again. I'm not like I'm baby witch when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, but I leaned across everything to, to mess with the music that was playing on my computer, which would have meant that I like went out of the circle, mm. like broke the circle or whatever. So like part of me like was thinking like after, like I went through months after this of like really bad mental health. And I don't mean depression. I mean, when I say this, I mean, like I was incredibly like I, I'm going to use the word delusional because now I'm in a, a lucid state where I don't but I thought stuff was in my room I thought there was something in the hallway I could not exist without a light on and I'm I'm the type of person that you can ask my partner if there's a light on a mon like a computer's turned off but the monitor light is like that little blue light I have to get up and cover it with like a jacket because that little light will pierce no my eye and I can't <laughs> sleep I cannot sleep with lights on at all and it got to a point where I was so paranoid and terrified and felt like something was in my room, something was in the hallway that I had to have all of my lights turned on. I had to have my computer on playing music, something on my phone. I was overstimulating myself so that I could not like experience whatever I felt like was around me. Yeah. Um, it felt like there was uh, an entity or something that was here. Um, and I was petrified, terrified. I remember one of my friends kind of like one of the things that maybe helps me come down from it. Cause it lasted for months. Um, I was in this like state for a couple of months, uh, like have to get up to go to the bathroom. So I would have to walk down, like leave my door open. So the light shine down the hallway, turn the light on in the bathroom, walk back, shut my door, walk to the bath. Like it was this, I could not exist. And then I would have to walk backwards down the hallway so that my back was not facing the dark kitchen beyond the hallway. Like I could not have any darkness, like threatening me in any way shape or yeah. form right so there's there's i'm sure that therapists are like oh interesting i can diagnose this right like there there's a couple of things that i can even look at that like a couple of years down the line and i'm like <sighs> <laughs> like scientifically it's diagnosable spiritually it's probably diagnosable too uh, but something had come together and it was catalyzed by that specific ritual i did and i did not go into it with fear i did not go into it with anxiety or trepidation yeah. it sounds I like you not... did a lot of research and you had prepared yeah. and and kind of knew what you were planning on doing at least I am not afraid. I am not, uh, well, I've got a lot of anxiety for sure. I'm a generally anxious person, but I was, I was not af like afraid of any of that stuff or anything. I didn't go into it thinking anything bad. I went into it being like, it's going to be the best tarot reading of my life. Like I'm going to get some really good, like downloads, spiritual downloads. And, <laughs> um, and then I, and then it was like looking in the mirror and I was like, what the hell is that? Like, and then, and then it just slowly crept over a couple of weeks and, um, got worse and worse and worse to the point where I was seriously questioning my quote unquote faith. Um, yeah. in like, I was like, did, do I really have no idea what I'm doing? And I just literally summoned some kind of demon by accident. Like I was straight up, like go like, like fear-based, like fully fear-based, like, oh my God, is there a demon? Did I get a, am I, am I being possessed? Like, la la la. Like, um, but I kept it mostly to myself because, um, I don't want to create any kind of fear based like dialogue around like magic or anything like that. Yeah, anyway, so. there's that. And then there's also on the other end of the spectrum, talking to the people who don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. You just sound crazy. Like it's so hard. Yeah. To, to I, find I fully know how I sound. Stuff with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know it sounds legit crazy. I know it does. Um, and, and to be fair, I probably was there for a couple of months. Um, mm. But I kept it to myself. My my brother knew about it. My partner probably knew about it, and a couple of my closest friends, and I think my coworkers, because I was like freaking out at like at, when I was working at the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's a couple of people in my life that like knew I was going through it. But like me looking back on it now, I'm like I can see like like now that I have a couple of like mental health diagnoses, like I can see like the the evidence of OCD like rituals coming out of that. I gotcha. can see the evidence of delusional, like a delusional episode. It definitely like, seemed to so, be like a catalyst in a lot of yeah. things. So um. like scientifically I can put words on it, but what I was feeling in the moment and what I was like experiencing, I don't know. I'm never going to do a, any type of circle ritual in front of a mirror ever again in my life. <laughs> like, I'm going to miss me with that. Like <laughs> flipping this mirror around. <laughs> Yeah, that was it's like Dalt Wisney is saying in chat, I probably just caught the attention of a wandering spirit. One of my friends kind of, because I ha I'm such a, a an anxious person, I watch a lot of horror. I've always been like a, a horror interested. Like I, so I, I think that I just jumped to the conclusion that it was mean or bad mm -hmm. or evil Painful or something. I might have just my, been there. My friend asked me like, are you afraid of it because it's scary or because you don't know what it is? And that 
that sentence was like the beginning of the end of the whole experience because it was like, it hasn't done anything scary. It hasn't, I'm not hearing like growling. I'm not smelling sulfur. I'm not like, you know, it's not like, I'm not, <laughs> well, but, but, okay. I forgot the most important part of this story. Um, the reason that this terrified me so much is this was the first time in my life ever that I experienced sleep paralysis ever. And I'm a very oh, yeah. curious person. And I've always been curious about sleep paralysis, but a couple of days after that ritual, I had my first episode of sleep paralysis and it terrified yeah, me. Yeah. Sleep but paralysis is freaky. <laughs> the second time I had sleep paralysis, I knew what it was and I knew what the feeling was and I was able to turn it into like a lucid dreaming astral projection gotcha. moment. So were you already I... kind of into lucid dreaming at the time yeah. of this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Cause I know that's like a, a normal, I've been trying to, to become a lucid dreamer for a little while now. And I know that uh, sleep paralysis is just kind of like, can be a side sleep effect paralysis. of that. It could also be um, a stepping stone to it. Mm -hmm. So if you if you can overcome the fear that that the very natural fear associated with being in a sleep paralysis yeah. episode, and like it, it helps me to uh, yes, I've I've been interested in I've been practice practicing to do lucid dreams for like fifteen years probably, um, and I for five or six years I listened to a lot of like. Not every single night, but a good majority of the nights. I when I fall asleep, I listen to meditations or sleep stories or sometimes ASMR and stuff. Um, and there's specific ones that I listen to that are like mental training for uh, astral projection and gotcha. lucid dreaming and how to how to change your consciousness into those that type of you know whatever. Um, and so when I had the first episode of sleep paralysis, I just, it was just I, pure panic. One of the most yeah. terrifying moments of my life until the paralysis faded out eventually. Um, and then I just woke up like, or I sat up sobbing four o'clock in the morning, calling my partner, you know, like, um, but the second time I logically understood what it was and I was able to go into the meditative practices that I'd already been listening to for years. So it's like subconsciously programmed into me to be able to turn, um, parts of your dream into astral projections if you if you can consciously control yourself a little bit um in those ways so uh i yeah i deeply practice um i guess but i'm not there's parts of me i think sometimes like i'll have like a year or so where i'm lucid in my dreams all the time um and then i get really tired of never getting to sleep and turn my brain off <laughs> so i like i like force myself to stop lucid, lucid dreaming dream where you just like, go to sleep in your dream <laughs> it's like i don't want to i i don't want to uh think like i just yeah. want to exist in the subconscious realm i don't want to be like consciously aware all the time like there's a reason that we dream and our consciousness shuts for off sure. there's a reason for that oh i've never heard somebody like uh mention that before that's so fascinating i never thought about that but it makes sense like sometimes you just want silence and quiet and yeah. like to wake up actually like rested well, <laughs> instead I don't of just like going on a, dream, a whole journey <laughs> you know seeing my sister except she's 10 years younger and we're in our old like house from 10 years ago and and I'm sitting there consciously aware that like oh I am currently in my past part of my brain experiencing <laughs> things my trauma from my child I, don't, I just I just want to be processed let my brain just process it the yeah. way that it needs to and then I can wake up <laughs> in the morning and be like hmm I had a weird dream and I just remember my sister and a plate of cookies i don't want to wake up and be like oh my god i just processed trauma <laughs> like <laughs> dream shadow work let's go <laughs> yeah yeah dreams are nothing but shadow work for sure yeah <laughs> yeah dreams are a lot oh so yeah i had no idea that like I guess, like, would you consider, like, dreaming or dream work to be, like, a big part of your practice then? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Huge part. Probably the biggest. Probably. Um, yeah, I, I would say so. I love listening to other people's dreams. I'm not the best at interpreting other people's dreams, but I can usually see, like, the major symbols that are – it's a lot like tarot reading. There's, like – you're yeah. like, oh. You, they're, they're like, yeah, they, they tell you this big elaborate story about how there's some kind of zombie apocalypse and they're running from zombies and they have to help their friend up the ladder, but the friend falls. They tell this big elaborate story, and at the end of it, you're like, oh, so, you, so what do you feel like is chasing you in your life? What do you feel like you're running from? What do you feel like is a threat that is, like – like, it's it's a – it's yeah, there's recognize so those, up in the, like archetypes almost right they're like so the caught up in the details of the zombies and the, the 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 left turn down the hallway the right turn but there was a weird spider on the floor they're so caught up in those little details that it's like the major archetype is just you were running from something like um 
and something that, uh, you know, I mean, we could even probably dig into the undead, something that is like returned yeah. from the dead is coming after you. Like, um, dreams are so fascinating. Oh, well, that's yeah. one thing I was like, I really want to get into dream work. I think I, my main problem now is, so I, I can recall my dreams as very similar to, I guess, your ritual experience, but I used to have a lot of paranormal experiences growing up. Um, and mm. I, it scared me so much. I was like lights on all the time. I had to fall asleep. Like from when I was, as soon as I was like, co- like a, able to be on my own, essentially in a room, I had to have a TV on. I would like listen to watch Disney movies on VHS, like over and over. And I remember like having to wake up in the middle of the night and like have to have a, a another VHS, like ready to go pre-rolled wow. and like swap them out real quick. So wow. that like, okay. I wouldn't have like the static or anything on the, the TV. That's it was bad. Yeah. Um, and like all through my high school years. And it wasn't until like the end of high school when I, um, I used to have like reoccurring nightmares a lot too. It was just like, I, I was so paranoid all the time, lights on all the time. Um, but I, I like stopped remembering my dreams at least, or I don't know if it's like my, my conscious brain was like, okay, you know what? We just don't need to remember that. Yeah. Um, but it isn't until fairly recently that I've finally been able to recall my dreams. And now I can recall my dreams pretty much every night I can, I'm writing something in my dream journals. Um, but now it's like, my problem is recognizing that I'm in a dream and my dreams are always so like story. Like, I think part of me is like enjoying the immersed. story and immersed and doesn't want to be broken out it's just like let's go on an adventure like I know, so. but that's what i think like i i think that i don't know in some ways i want to say like lucid dreaming is overrated like um <laughs> it's not really that it's overrated but i i i think that there's a reason that we shut off when we sleep yeah. like otherwise we would all be conscious during our dreams mm-hmm. i don't think there's anything wrong with lucid obviously like i but i like I don't know. And I think, I think that there is a lot of like exploring you could do internally. Like lucid dreaming is something that I think could be beneficial and useful, but um, it can also be detrimental sometimes. Like yeah. uh, it, especially if you're um, someone who's an overthinker, um, you don't want to think for some, sometimes. And sometimes the only way that you can stop thinking is, I don't know, it's just really exhausting to like mm-hmm. go for me personally to go through my whole day existing and then to go through the whole dream like aware of it and then the first thing I do in the morning is dream journal and go into analysis <laughs> mode of what do these like it, it's really yeah. exhausting sometimes so I I will go through phases where I'm like I I, I, I really want to understand what's happening in my subconscious and so I'm, cr- I'm I'm chronically dream journaling and practicing and all of this stuff um but it also, I think, like, some of my, my lucid dreaming and, like, astral projection practices have, have caused worse insomnia problems for me. There's one that I practice a lot um, called Wake Induce Lu- Lucid Dreaming, Wild, the Wild Oh, technique. is that the one where you set the, the timers and you wake you up can. at certain times through the night? Yeah. It, 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 that's the better way to do it is to set a timer for, like, like around your REM cycle so so two hours in five hours in or so like it's going to slightly vary for everyone depending on how quickly you fall asleep but um I would practice it as like as I'm falling asleep for the first time that night I would uh try to remain conscious as my body was falling asleep but that like the first time rim kicks in is like 90 minutes after your body falls asleep or something so you have to have the most insane mental discipline to be able to stay conscious for 90 minutes and let your body fall asleep um (laughs) i mean like actually insane mental discipline um the better way to do it is to like wake yourself up in the middle of a rim cycle um but the there's a different type of discipline that comes in there because then i'm like um, and you know, you know how it is when you're woken up in the middle of like a deep sleep and your eyes are like barely able to open, you're like kind of cross-eyed trying mm-hmm. to open your eyes and you can barely like, imagine trying to wake yourself up intentionally during that and then let your body fall back asleep, but mindfully stay awake while it's happening. Like yeah, imagine how difficult that is. <laughs> I have trouble focusing on like one thing at a time. <laughs> like I, that, that's hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a lot um I feel uh I feel like I have the better lucid dream experiences when I'm able to just become lucid in the dreams um instead of trying to like wait the wake induced lucid dream is is an interesting technique but I feel like it's better on my body physically when I just have mental discipline and there are ways that you can like trigger your mind to to okay it's called dream what's it called reality checks 
Um, so I think that's yeah. The term this is what I'm struggling it. with. I think this is like the phase that I'm. My struggling favorite with one the... is every time you open a door or walk through a door, and every time I mean every time you have to train yourself to do this, not in a dream, in the real world. Yeah. Um, instead of opening the door, put your hand on the door frame and push. And, and and try to push your hand through the door. Like imagine okay. your hand, you know, and be like, I'm yeah. going to push my hand through the door. And it, in reality, it's going to be met with resistance. Mm-hmm. But in a dream world, you should be able to push your hand through the door. That's and a good one. I like that. that. Will, but you have to do it every time you walk through a door. You have to, that has to be, or I mean, there's other ways that you could, other things that you could do. Like every time you take a drink or something, you try to like disintegrate the, the can or something like, or the, the cup, whatever the container, like there there's, but you have to make it one specific repetitive action. So like every time you brush your teeth or every time you, something you do every day, a door is great because you're always walking through doors yeah. and doors show up all the time in dreams. So if it's something like brushing your teeth, you might not brush your teeth that often in dreams. The ones so. that I've heard of were like doing this or like putting your finger, th- cause like in a dream, your finger should go through your hand, but like that doesn't come up I, I have in a hard dreams. time remembering to do this in reality. In, yeah. Yeah. Or like the other one I've heard of is asking like, am I in a dream right now? Um, and doing that like am in I the dreaming? real world. Is this a dream? Is yeah. It, what you could also <laughs> do if you really wanted to is write it on your hand every day. Am Ooh. I, is this a dream? And then eventually it's going to show up in your, your, it should show up in your dreams too. Something interesting to do would maybe be get it tattooed on your hand. That's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that somewhere you're always like, it's going to be visible all the time and you're going to be thinking about it all the time. But I, I will say for me personally, because I struggle with like delusional thinking and stuff, but, um, if you are constantly in a state where you're questioning your reality, it can cause really big problems for you. And it, it can make you not trust like like I said, like you're, you, you, you could get to the point where you think that waking world is a dream world because like maybe you're seeing the thing on your hand. Like it, it, so I, I, yeah. there was this one book that I read one time, I forget the name of it, but um, it's, it's in my storage. If anybody is listening and really wants that, I can go dig it out. But um, it was teaching and this messed me up. Like uh, it was teaching you that every time you fell asleep, as you were falling asleep, think to yourself over and over and over again, I'm waking up. I'm about to wake up. I'm about to get out of bed and wake up. I'm about to wake up. So as you're falling asleep, you're telling yourself that you're about to wake up. And then when you first wake up in the mornings, you tell yourself, oh, I just fell asleep and I'm dreaming. Oh, I just fell asleep. I'm in a dream right now. I don't now. like this. So you, <laughs> yeah, you flip your mindset and and that is supposed to, to in, create a space where you can be lucid in your dreams. But what I feel, it, this is the whole like, like mirror world. Girl like... that does acid <laughs> that thinks she can fly and jumps out the window thing. Like okay. if you're, if you're convincing yourself that this reality is a dream world, then you could do some very dangerous things mm-hmm. that could hurt you. <laughs> yeah. So I think like, um, and I just want to take a second here to do like a little disclaimer, just since we're kind of talking on this, like, uh, line between like reality and dreaming um when messing with stuff like this it's always like super nice to have like a support system around you whether it's like a friend family member somebody who knows what you're doing and can can check out with you of course if you um need help from a mental health professional uh, that doesn't make you any less of a magical person seeking mental help um so don't be afraid to take your meds and so on yes absolutely (laughs) um so yeah there there's my little (laughs) disclaimer there there yeah um it that i when i read that part of the book i stopped reading the book i was like this is this is not a good idea i don't know how i feel about (laughs) that that's not a good idea that's not a good idea for me at all and maybe it is for some people but not for me (laughs) I wouldn't so, be able to get anything done. Like, yeah, that I would be freaking myself out. And I'd be like, especially oh, if, since if I this work is from a home dream, now, like, I'd be like, this is a dream. Like... Why would I go to work? Like, why would I? Why would I do anything that like we need to do to function in society? Like, yeah. Oh, that's so crazy. <laughs> um, so, what do you consider to be like the the most important or the most influential part of your path? Like, if you, I guess we just talked about dreaming. Would you consider dreaming to be like if you had to do like one thing, or if one thing was like the most important for you? God, I don't know. Um, 
Because I know, like, I you're really know. into astrology, no. too, as well, right? Dream we haven't really like, talked I don't, about that. I don't know that I would say any one is, like, the most important. I'm, I, I think this is why, like, I use the word eclectic to describe myself. Like, okay. I don't – I could function without astrology. I could function without tarot. I could function without dream work. Like, I, I don't need any one of those to, like, feel like I'm practicing or whatever. Oh. And to me, like, like, I don't necessarily even think of those things as, like – it's not until I talk to people and I try to like define, like, I don't, I don't wake up in the morning and go, Oh, I'm a, I'm a, a tarot witch. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> or, you know, a, a divination way. I don't, I don't think about myself like that. It was a really hard thing for me to even label myself as a witch in the mm-hmm. first place or pagan or Wiccan, like, and try to understand. And the main reason that I've gone into the word or the word, witch or whatever, like, is because I feel like I can create community here. I feel like I can, Mm. I, the, this is probably where like out of everything, this is what I would fit in the most with, but it's, I still struggle. I'm, I'm, you know, Sagittarius. um, (laughs) I don't want to be in a box. I don't want to have a label because there's restrictions then there's, and, and the worst part for me about, a risque a topic, but the witchy community in general is there's a lot of um, gatekeeping and um, mm. like rule enforcing about how you can and can't practice. So I yeah. feel like if I say that I'm a practitioner in a certain type of way, then it's like, oh, well, you don't do it this way. So you're not really that. Mm. Like, I feel like I'm going to get gate kept or like, like corrected or told. Yeah. So that's why I'd rather just like so the, the answer, the, there's no, I don't know, it, what is my one thing or what could, what, I, I don't know that I have one thing. My one thing is probably the internet. I don't know what I would do without <laughs> the internet. <laughs> there's the, the technical side of things coming out, right? Well, this is how I do all of, all of my manifesting, yeah. like all of it, everything that I have, it comes from the internet. Mm-hmm. And if I I could survive without the internet for sure. We all could like, um, you know, I'm watching the walking dead right now. We'll survive without (laughs) technology, but, um, but most of my, my, I, if we're wanting to use that word manifesting, like it, it is fully, I do it all through the internet. I, uh, the, the word of mouth, the building a career for myself, the, the, Oh my God, I have a bill due next week and I need to manifest that money really quick. I do something online that creates that money. Like it's, so it, cool. it, yeah, like it's probably the internet is my, my, <laughs> the thing I couldn't yeah. live without. Oh, that's so cool. And it's so interesting too. Cause it's like, um, we, we've talked so much and I feel like we have a lot of similar like beliefs and things, but like, we're so different in our practices too. It's just so, that's one of the things yeah. I love the most yeah. about like <laughs> the magical world is like, uh, you can find like a people that you really connect with and and really like uh want to talk to and everything but you're everyone's so different which is so awesome um so i guess where are you looking to expand or grow or learn more in your practice like do you Uh, have like a goal esoterica i guess like 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 general esoterica and Mm -hmm. like kabbalah i guess um is uh the other term um i i want to I just want to understand. I want to understand all of the individual symbols on the back of a dollar bill and why they're there (laughs) and why we've let them be there. Um, I wanted, I've always wanted to do this. I mean, this is like 18 year old me, like on the internet forums of like, what are Freemasons? Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so it not, not so much in like a, like, maybe like the political sense, but I, I just want to know, like, obviously like, so like a lot of people in positions of power, practice and are interested in this esoteric symbolism and astrology Mm -hmm. I want to understand it I want to know why and and even when I start when I'm when I take midnight study session in the direction where we're going to be digging into media representations of these symbols like stranger things don't even get me started um (laughs) or the marvel movies don't even get me started like when I they understand the power that these images have on the collective consciousness and they're put this is why i'm so like eyeballing Fortnite and stuff like if something's <laughs> free and it's being pushed to children and there's a lot of symbolism mm-hmm. in it or a lot of like m- like large images and stuff in it that yeah, that i'm like there, there's some <laughs> there's some like programming going on there and what is the programming what is the message what is the intention behind the message what are they trying to do with it so um I want to understand is the Gemini motto and I'm a Gemini stellium. So like, I just want to understand. I want Mm -hmm. to know 
what the images yeah. mean. I and I want to know, you know, what the the connection between um, modern, it, like Thor in our movie. Like we're all obsessed with Thor, so sexy. Oh my god, you know, like <laughs> our, our, you know, all of these like characters in Marvel, and they're based. Some of them, not all of them, mm-hmm. but some of them are based on mythical, like yeah. Zeus, like old ancient mythology, and this ancient mythology is still prevalent and relevant Thor themselves is in... thor loki and odin are all characters so like all of the the thor sphere is straight from norse mythology of course it's exactly. not like exact right don't well, don't at me people but <laughs> but then they're all uh they're all also related to astrology yeah and astrology is something that the as above so below it affects us all whether we want to admit it or not um so yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, the, the esoteric knowledge I, and and the the correspondences between like, oh my God, did you realize that actually this major character on TV is really just a metaphor for ISIS, and we're all it's we're all still like kind of like haphazardly participating in like ISIS ISIS uh, worship or what one thing that I really want to and I don't know like is specifically the black cube of Saturn like that is that mm-hmm. is a symbol that I am like I don't understand and I want to understand it because there's like a like a black cube and is it in mecca like some and i'm i'm geographically dumb so forgive me if i use the wrong term but it's this somewhere in the so middle out of my sphere so <laughs> somewhere in the middle east there's a giant black cube and people will walk around it like either mm-hmm. clockwise or counterclockwise and it's part of like a worship practice and i'm that specifically and it's linked to saturn because the pole of saturn mm-hmm. creates a hexagon um like like the swirl around saturn is in the shape of a hexagon which is nuts how does that happen? Like, <laughs> like, how do you? Very fascinating. Yeah, like I. Yeah. So I'm, I the, <laughs> this the, seems to be your it, next episode. <laughs> maybe it, it, I feel like this one's gonna be like a like yeah, far, out. far down the line because mm. it's a little. Well, I think they're really gonna have crazy. to have some understandings of like more basic principles before we get oh, yeah. in, into those. Ooh, it's so fascinating though. I feel like you could just dive forever, forever and ever. I, I could. I mean, <laughs> honestly, like midnight study session is gonna be the gift that keeps on giving for yep. me. There's never I'm never gonna have a lack of content. Unlimited to put into content. It. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right. So we kind of covered like a, your general spirituality and how uh how you define your spirituality. I'm a handful. Your main... You were yeah. you didn't know what you were getting into, did you get there? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is awesome. Like, the, I was not expecting the whole dream tangent. I thought we would spend a lot more time on astrology. Um, so, but the, I love uh, the. I'm still the like kind of a noob so to on. astrology, mm-hmm. though. So I'm, I'm. That's like that's you know another a lot one that more I'm. Than I do. I'm wanting to deeply study, <laughs> yeah. uh, which ties into a lot with what I'm doing mm-hmm. with the esoteric research because they're they're all like all of these big gods are usually linked to the planets anyway. Yeah. Oh, that's so fascinating. So I guess this next section, let's talk a little bit about um, being a tarot reader, specifically in the realm of Twitch. So you mentioned that you've Mm. been reading tarot for like 10 plus years. What first got you into tarot? (laughs) Uh, So I used to live in a party house um, in my early (laughs) 20s. It was a great house. I mean, it was a trash heap, but it was great. We we ran um, like metal shows out of our basement. We had some pretty interesting, like like not super huge, but we had some pretty well known bands that came and played in our basement. Oh, wow. um, so it was like a little punk, like like crust punk house, you know, back in my like mohawk punk days, um, <laughs> and. It, I worked a full-time job at the time, data entry, but it was a third shift. So I would go to work at six, get home at three o'clock in the morning. And sometimes at night when I came home, um, I would, I, I carpooled with a friend. So I would get out of their car and like, look at my house and there'd be a dozen people on my front porch. And then you'd walk inside and there's 50 people inside metal music blaring out of the basement. And then, uh, I have no idea who any of these people are. That was just the, the life I was living at the uh-huh. time. It was fun. It was also really shitty as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. But, um, um, one night I got home and there were a bunch of people like, you know, empty beer cans, uh, PBRs all over the front porch. And there's this, this kid, and I say kid now, but he was my age. He was a 20 year old or so. And I don't, I don't know him. I never saw him again. I didn't know his name, but he was this shaggy haired hippie looking dude, like, like <laughs> shaggy, curly, like crazy shirtless, had a beer can in one hand and he was sitting in front of my front door on the porch with the light, this like 
you know, dim golden light. There's a couple of other stragglers around and I'm walking down the sidewalk, looking at him and the lights just shining on him like a beacon. And he's just got a couple of cards. Quest laid giver there them. for you. <laughs> and I literally am like, uh, and this is just like how, like how I, like I would get home from work and would just immediately like whoever's on the front porch, I just jump into car. I don't know you, but give me a sip of that beer. What's up? Let me get that cigarette. Like, how's everybody doing? Like, just dive into whoever's there. And, um, it was really exciting in a lot of ways for that reason, but it was also very unstable uh, mentally to come home to stuff like that. But uh, I walk up and I just sit there and I stare at him for a second. Like I'm standing in front of him and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what is this? Like, I'd never <laughs> seen tarot cards before. I knew what they were as, as, as we all do from media and stuff. But, um, and so he's like, Oh, they're tarot cards. You want me to read your tarot? And I was just like, sure. <laughs> what that means, Why not? Sure. And so I sat down, shared a cigarette with them or some other kind of wrapped up herb. And, um, and I don't even remember what cards he pulled for me. I don't remember anything about the reading, but I remember that it blew my mind. I remember that I was like, how the hell did you know that? <laughs> wow. I remember that I was like, wait a second. Like, um, and it changed, it, like, I, and I was just lit up about it. And I was like, oh my God, what was this? What was that? That was so cool. I was telling all of my friends about it. And then uh, my roommate's boyfriend um, was a tarot reader too, or I was interested in the occult, I guess I should say. And he always used the gummy bear tarot deck. And um, <laughs> so once I was talking to him about my interest in tarot or my interest in that tarot reading I received, um, he was like, well, let me read your tarot too. And then he used the gummy bear tarot deck on me. And I was like, this is so cool. I love this. And then the next day when I came home from work that my, my roommate's boyfriend had a tarot deck for me and gave me my first tarot deck. Oh, that's so um, cool. And I probably would never have bought myself one. Um, I don't, I think that I would have just, you know, Gemini brain, I would have been fleetingly interested in it for a few mm. days and then moved on to something else. But he gifted it to me and I dove into it in the way that I am right now, where I was like notebooks out, dissecting every symbol and every, si so I was very academic, no intuition at all. I was going into it fully <laughs> left brain, fully anal analysis, logic minded yeah. and it was only when I let go of studying that I started reading properly. Mm -hmm. And even studying when I was like, it can be such a crutch with, with anything. It is. Really. It is. But um, that perfectionism you, of needing to understand every little thing before actually doing. You got to let go a little bit and just trust. And, uh, that that's a lot of, I remember I saw a tweet online one time about tarot that was like, uh, tarot reading is nothing but like looking at cards and, and weaving bullshit. <laughs> and it was it was written by a tarot reader uh -huh. and it was like it wasn't someone who was criticizing tarot it was someone who deeply understood yeah. tarot. <laughs> i was like that's exactly right because nine times out of ten when i'm reading tarot i'm like i'm just word vomiting bullshit mm -hmm. right now but that's <laughs> what channeling is <laughs> you just open up and let it flood out of you yeah. and you're you're going to say what needs to be said <laughs> you have to trust that <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, that's so fascinating. Oh, I love how like tarot was delivered to you. Essentially. Yeah, it was. It yeah, was. that's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> and so, I never, I never. Well, I, I yeah, I pract I've been practicing with it since then. I started reading tarot. Um, for I mean, even from the beginning, I was reading for my friends. Like everybody, uh, we had fifteen or so people that lived in that house. Everybody was getting a tarot reading from me. And when I moved away from that to town, yeah, um, except. <laughs> Okay, so I had okay, so I had one one of my best friends. She um she dated around. She she had a lot of she went through a lot of partners. Um and <laughs> there was one time in particular where she came up to me with this new guy that she was dating and she was like, Read our tarot, like read a tarot reading for both of us. And so I started reading the cards and I was just like looking at them and I like looked at the guy and I was like, he's gonna have to leave. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say this in front of him. <laughs> Cause it, it was basically just like you don't care about him. You don't care about any of these people. Like you're not like, this is just the flavor of the week kind of thing. Yeah. And, um, I probably could have done that without the tarot cards to be honest, but, uh, <laughs> sometimes but, the tarot is just like the tools of delivery. <laughs> it is. It is. It lets you say what needs to be said sometimes. Yeah. And, and it kind of gets you off the hook a little bit. So, um, yeah, but that's where it comes into the tarot reader being like able to mindfully and uh, deliver the messages and detach the ego a little yeah. bit too, and not use them as ways of like revenge or like like hurting people because you could like yeah. do that. Like, um, mm -hmm. 
and just be like, any just, tool. Yeah. What the tarot card said wasn't me. Like I wasn't the one saying that you're you're a piece of shit. It was the tarot. Like, <laughs> like um, <laughs> got to make sure that you're not doing that. But uh, when I moved away from that town, um, this was in 2016, right when I started streaming about a year before I started streaming, I actually started my YouTube channel and it was all based around witchcraft in the beginning. My first video was called how I found my spiritual. My first video was, I didn't realize that you did your YouTube entirely before you started Twitch. I thought they were kind of simultaneous. That's super interesting. Yeah. I started, I started my YouTube channel. My first video was, uh, how to do witchy nails. And it was like painting my nails and, you know, in a way that was like kind of Gothic looking. And, um, and then there was another one that was like a, a Celtic, um, like makeup, like, like kind of photo shoot that I did where I'd done like a really weird third eye, but with like Celtic inspired makeup to go with it. And, um, and so it was like makeup tutorials, nail tutorials focused around a witchy aesthetic. And then my first m- video that, that did any kind of numbers was called how I found my spiritual path. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was part of a, you, a group on Facebook called the YouTube Pagans or the Pagans of YouTube or something like that. And they had a 30 day or like, no, it was a year long um, video challenge. So every week there was a different topic. And the first episode, the first topic was how did you find your spiritual path? The next one was coming out of the witchy broom closet there. And I still have a copy of this somewhere. Um, it'd be interesting if you ever wanted it just for content ideas, but um, yeah, cause there <laughs> were, be like cool. every quarter there was like, how do you incorporate this season into your magic? Every quarter there was a video for that. So it would be the different, like, you know, Beltane and Ostara yeah. and all of those, like, um, but, uh, those, those videos did really well because I was part of that, that, community on Facebook. So I had a little bit of an initial um, interest in the videos and then that pushed it into the witchy algorithm on YouTube. But then I started doing Twitch and it overtook everything. Uh, Twitch took over. And now (laughs) I'm just now finding my way back to like the roots of why I got started, like being like a content creator, which was not how to put an overlay on OBS. It was me sharing my spiritual practices and my spiritual awakening and my spiritual journey and, um, and exploring also like, like videos that I did like 10 years ago, which please God, don't let them exist on the internet anymore. Um, (laughs) are, uh, more focused on like, like I was talking about astral projections out of body experiences, my acid trips, uh, uh, symbolism in mainstream media and really like in going into conspiracy realm and stuff. But that's why I try to, to, taper myself a lot now but i still am like no we're gonna look at these celebrity like <laughs> like the cult symbols we're gonna look at it but i'm gonna try to be grounded and rational instead of like loosey-goosey like i was but <laughs> but i was young i was young and dumb <laughs> so. we, all, we all evolve and we all learn right but the the first time i was doing tarot on like for other people i guess like first time i got paid for tarot readings was through a different facebook group and it was based out of that old city I lived in. And it was, I just posted a thread one day that was like, does anybody want a tarot reading? And like a hundred people wanted a tarot reading. Oh, you know? wow. And, and well, it was a, it was a pretty big group and it was a pretty like, you know, tight Was it just we were... like a, was it specifically for like, uh, you mentioned like the, a pagan group on Facebook. Was it, it wasn't like... in that group. So this was, this is a different, this was, was it just for uh, the town? Uh, like this just one, okay, Shout out to this group, <laughs> I guess, but it was called the unpopular opinion discussion group. And okay. it was, a, it was a hipster group from the old city I lived in. It was all the punk. Okay. It was so it wasn't just like X town to group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was though. It was specific for that town, um, but they gotcha. had their, their, their name for it because a major part of the, the community was like, so they were like Red- they were Reddit like people is how I could say it. I've never been into Reddit, mm. but they really liked to to debate with each other. It was like okay. the debate club. Like so, they would go in and post like like contrary opinions just for the sake of sparking debate. They might they were playing. It was like Devil's Advocate Land. Okay. That was one section of the forum that I I didn't participate in. Um, but there was a section, the subsection of it called the lounge where everyone just hung out, post pictures of their dogs. So it was like everyone over here is like these intellectual debate bros, but but there's like the chill area of it and. Um, I, I hung out in the chill area of it because that's that it was just, 
it was a social group that I had been that I had lived with, like, and they had created mm-hmm. this pretty large Facebook group. It was a couple thousand members, which was pretty pretty big for a yeah. Facebook group. Um, very active, tight knit, and I posted in the lounge. Does anybody want a tarot reading? That group had nothing to do with magic. It had nothing to do with witchcraft. Most people in there didn't really like talk about it, and so it was novel, and everybody wanted one. And so I I for three days straight did a tarot reading for everybody that said on that thread that they wanted a tarot reading for three days straight. I had no idea. And they were, they were giving you in money for this at least? No, right? oh, no, no. This, was, this was unpaid. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was yeah. getting into. And I was like, okay, so I would, t- I would pull the cards out. I would, I would be like, what's your question? I would pull the cards out and then I would write like a little paragraph and take a picture and I would post it to them. It'd be like posting a Twitter thread and saying, anybody yeah. that leaves an emoji gets a tarot reading. Oh, and wow. then you have a hundred people that reply within the first like hour. And you're like, Oh shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I did that. And then by the end of all of it, there was, I mean, it made me very like well known in the community after yeah. that point. Because it was like I was the tarot reader at mm-hmm. that point. And um, but there was a couple of people that were like, What's your PayPal? I want to send you money for this. Oh, that's and nice. so so there was a couple of people, and I think one person in particular sent me like fifty dollars. Wow. And I was like, oh shit, what? Like, this is, you know, there's something <laughs> here. Viable? There's something yeah. to this. Like there's there, I'm, I'm good enough at this and I've, I've done enough with this that someone feels like it's worth this amount of money. So, um, and that's when I tried to bring it to Twitch, but at the time, 2016, tarot was against the rules, illegal on twitch.tv. Um, notes, no tarot allowed was a rule, but there was only like gaming categories and the creative category. Yeah. There wasn't even an IRL section yet. So this the was creative- just after creative had been added too, right? Because yeah. uh, say at and- first there was no creative at all. And creative would have been the only spot that that tarot could have happened on. So, uh, but there was a specific rule under the creative category that said no tarot, no fortune telling, no divination of any kind. Um, which is really interesting. Uh, yeah. That, that was, that was a rule. I that know I've talked added. to you about this in general. Um, but, uh, I feel like this is important enough to mention for sure. Um, but a lot of the, the standard laws that we have against fortune telling are specifically targeted against Romani peoples. Yeah. It's um, racist. So yeah. yeah and it, it's great that we're starting to move away from from this but i think that understanding the reason why these laws are there is very important it's it's really interesting that that twitch even thought to add that yeah um i find that very weird to be honest that they that even crossed their mind to put that on a rule um I wonder if there was someone early, early in Twitch that had tried to do tarot or something. Yeah, I'm curious, but, but... But it was shortly after that that the uh, just chat... No, it wasn't just chatting. Sorry, it was the IRL category mm. was added. And then creative was broken down into like five different groups. And uh, and then eventually they... So once IRL was added, I was like, y'all can't tell me I can't do tarot now because there's people in here doing all kinds of crazy yeah. shit. Like I, I'm going to read tarot. <laughs> so I, uh, I started reading tarot under the IRL category. And then eventually we get more and more categories. The tarot category is still pretty new. Yeah. Um, on Twitch. So it's not always been here. Um, it was used to be like once they did away with IRL and turned it into just chatting you did tarot under just chatting so um yeah there's actually a lot of companies candy had creative that have kind of I know that one of my friends um when they tried to join fan house had a really big difficulty with getting the monetization added on fan house because they did tarot and there's some kind of rule with square or something the mm. apple payment process that so I, it's really weird it, at this point yeah. it's just like really like weird but it's um, bizarre it's an online service in this like like no there's so many other things that can be comparable yeah. um and i know that this is too why like the disclaimer of uh this is for entertainment purposes that comes from this as well too um, yeah the same kind of line of, of thinking and processing that we're having here um but yeah so i guess uh, do you have any thoughts about like the evolution of tarot here on twitch i mean now we've got our own category oh, right no. um, <laughs> <laughs> well like so if you were on the twitch board or something like what would you what like tags maybe would you like to see or extended spiritual I categories would like the tarot category to be renamed um i wish that it was something with a bigger umbrella uh uh-huh. because i i what what about people that want to do like like 
I don't know, like when I'm researching tarot or when we're doing our tarot podcast. Yeah, or, or this year, right? Do, yeah, <laughs> this should be under the tarot category, but it could also be under the podcast category. But the right audience is going to find it under tarot. And I I wish that ta- I don't know the right word because um, it's not fair to put like a, a den- denominate. I don't know what word, mm-hmm. but like it's not not fair to put even witchy. Some people find the word yeah. witch to be like kind of a slur and that slur is probably not the right word to, to use. Just to uh, not everybody who practices um magic in general wants to put the term witch on they don't like the word for for good reason right um it has a lot of negative connotations in a lot of cultures still like an lgbt some people like i i like the word queer but some people find the word queer Mm -hmm. offensive so it's witchy isn't right pagan and and wiccan aren't right because those are very limiting um and people practice without falling into that category um spiritual isn't even Mm -hmm. right because i think that that would imply something totally different um so i i don't i don't maybe mindfulness but even mindfulness doesn't sound right like it i don't know what the right word is but i wish that it had a large umbrella even if it was like tarot and magic or tarot mm-hmm. and and or or and and occ- like I mean, even occult has negative connotations so they couldn't use that word i'm sure because yeah. it probably messed with advertisement opportunities and so it's like yeah new age not necessarily either because yeah, new, new age, age is starting to kind of have negative, negative connotations, connotations as well too and it's just um i mean it's like everything kind of in this sphere uh, like it, it, it does people take it because too- because yeah. people come in and take advantage of what mm-hmm. it is and they, they create a negative environment around the phrases because they abuse it. They abuse mm-hmm. the, the power of it. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what the right word is, but I, I do wish that the tarot category had a different name that implied that more things could happen here. Yeah. Um, and Even just like divination would be a broader umbrella than just tarot for the act of fortune telling essentially. Right. Um, I feel like tarot but it is could be even broader than that more uh mainstream digest digestible than mm-hmm. divination though. yeah that's so I, true I, it's gonna be more recognizable as long as we're not gonna get in trouble for doing stuff like this in the tarot category mm-hmm. then they can keep yeah. the name tarot whatever but <laughs> i want to be able like like i'm I don't know. I'm, I'm experimenting with my, my midnight study session. I'm putting, I'm going in ASMR and yeah. I'm, yeah, I think I'm going to try out just chatting next week too. Like, I just want to, like, I'm trying to find the right category um, because tarot is really small and it has no visibility. Mm-hmm. Um, it so- is small. We've got a great community here so far. Um, but yeah, the, the cap on the category right now is still there, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and it's going to take time for it to grow like anything else. Uh, and I don't think Tara will ever be as big as art or just chatting or even like ASMR um, yeah. as much as we would like it to. <laughs> yeah. But like, even like, I don't know, even in the ASMR category, I'm not, um, I'm not totally, I'm not, I'm not mm-hmm. totally sold on that, that category either. <laughs> I ASMR also wish that it has its own whole bag of worms though. We... Yeah. And I wish that ASMR, uh, had a bigger branch as well because like Mm -hmm. I know when I do soft-spoken uh content in that category I I get criticism from the community at large and it's like but ASMR isn't just like licking noises it's really not it's no I the ASMR that I have always listened to since before the the it became a trending subject has been people gent. it's literally mommy read a book Mm -hmm. to me so I can fall asleep (laughs) Yeah, I listen to a lot of mythology stories um, at night when I fall asleep, which is technically ASMR, even though it's just somebody like telling uh, mythology. Yeah, it's like a documentary, essentially, but without visuals. That's what I'm hoping with like midnight study sessions. It's like, okay, it's just like listening to someone drone on about ancient (laughs) mythology and it'll put you to sleep. Like, that's what I'm hoping. And maybe you learn something too at the same time, right? The tarot category, I want to say, is about a year and a half old, maybe two years Mm -hmm. old at this point. It's, it's, it's pretty young still, yeah. but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it hasn't been around for too, too long. Cause I know the first time I got into streaming, it was, it was not here <laughs> yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm happy mm-hmm. for it. I just, in some ways I'm a little nervous about it growing too. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I, I, it's safe I, right I, now. It's small and it's safe. And like, we don't get a ton of trolls. Or at least I, I've yeah. been very, very lucky with the number of trolls uh, that I've had to deal People, with here. Yeah, it's Almost a very, nothing, honestly. That's why like but, the just chatting category is like, you're, you're 
you need to prepare for yeah. trolls. And in the tarot category, it's like, damn, you really searched for this, didn't you? <laughs> you really searched you were seeking. to find this. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with a lot of the tags that they've given us, at least, that are starting to to branch in this direction. Like, we do have a mindfulness tag. We do have spirituality, fortune telling. Um, and I do believe that there's a pagan tag now, too. Yeah, I think so. Um, which is pretty awesome. It'd be nice to have even more. Um, there, like, I wish we had, a, even just, like, tonight when I was trying to pick tags, I wanted, like, a, a talking tag for this category um, or something like that. Uh, just a tag that you could like, even if you were talking in a game, like it was a very just heavy um, no, narrative or the something. Word, the word chatty. There's a oh, tag called chatty. There's chatty. I probably yeah. could have used that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Learn something new every day. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. I think like maybe metaphysical would be like a good umbrella term. Um, but it I think that be. even then. Yeah. Metaphysical is almost like too brainy sounding mm-hmm. though yeah it's i i don't know that there's a good solution i guess <laughs> i just i just if, if it ever and... comes down to that that i get in trouble or someone gets in trouble for being mm-hmm. in the tarot category and doing something magic related but not not technically tarot then then i'm gonna have some some a bone to pick with yeah switch. but as of sure. right now we're we're they're letting we're us do our what thing we can with you know what we've got <laughs> yeah and I mean, like, even like, like with uh, my partner um, who was drawing uh, a tarot deck and like putting themselves in the tarot category while they're working on the art for the tarot deck makes sense. Like yeah. um, it could go in the art category, but it also is more appropriate for people that are interested in tarot Absolutely. to see the tarot art. Right. So I, as long as they're open to people kind of flexing around in this tag, um, then I think it's OK. But if they're going to start cracking down on it, then they need to give us a bigger un- umbrella. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, you've been streaming tarot on Twitch since before the category was even here, right? Um, You've had many successful charity streams dealing Mm. tarot. You've got that monthly full moon podcast now Mm -hmm. and the weekly esoteric deep dive into tarot symbolism. So can you kind of walk us through, like, uh, I guess, like, your thought process through this, like, evolution of how you've been a tarot reader on Twitch and maybe, like, some of your upcoming future plans? Damn, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm, I get kind of bored sometimes of just reading tarot. Um, that's why I kind of like I'm moving into like teaching about it, I guess, if, if we want to call it that. It's like learn with me. So I'm lear- I'm teaching people through me learning, if, if that makes sense. Um, and I think a lot of I think it, it I don't know, that's one of my I, it, it, it creates like an approachable space because it's I'm not coming to this as like I am an expert and you learn from me. It's like, hey, I'm a kind of a dummy. Do you want to be less of a dummy with me by reading this Wikipedia article with me? Like, um, mm-hmm. so I, I think it creates like a really um approachable way to learn about some of this stuff, which is uh overwhelming to learn about, but um when I say I get bored of reading tarot, um, I even feel guilty saying that out loud, but it, it is what it is. Like it's, it's, they're fleeting. It's a very germane, uh, draining. Yes. Like yes. thing to do on, especially to people on the internet. So on as well, right? There's a lot of people that just show up, get a reading and you never see them ever again in your life. And that's fine. Like there's some people that show up in your Twitch stream when you're playing a video game and they're there that one night and you never see them again. But it's a lot for me, like the type of energy that is expected for me during a tarot stream compared to the type of energy that's expected for me during a Stardew Valley stream, um, yeah. is dramatically different. Like I'm expected to be some kind of like never ending pool of emotional support when I'm a tarot reader. Uh, I always have the right thing to say. Um, I always make you feel better. I'm a nurturer. I'm, uh, the mommy energy that you're like missing out on. Like it, it's a very like big, um, expectation and like you said draining and a lot of times when I finish a tarot stream especially when it's like charity related and I've just had to do like 15 tarot readings back to back in like four hours I don't want to do anything for like five days it takes me so long to recover Mm -hmm. um like just I feel that's not reading tarot for just like an hour either that's like five plus hours of straight reading after reading like even a somebody who's working at a tarot shop at least has like breaks and um you know there's not going to be a constant flow of customers and i think there's something different too to read tarot um 
in person and, and have that personal energetic exchange, like with someone as compared to just, I'm sitting in front of my computer with all of these lights on and a bunch of voices in chat that are like, you know, me next, me next, me next. And then if I say like, oh, sorry, tarot readings are for charity only. And then I get some kind of attitude about it. And it's like, I'm sitting here giving and giving and giving. And like, you expect it for free. Like you expect it for, for like, I think that's the worst part about the tarot tag or tarot community. No, it's not the community. Um, It's the tarot the section. Consumers. On the Yeah. It's the people that come in and do exclamation mark join. And then like, they don't say a word to you. They just come in and they're like, which is, I mean, fine. I guess I get it. Like if you're at a, like at a, at a Renaissance festival and it's just someone stepping in line, like it's someone putting themselves in line, but it's also like, it's so entitled. There's so much entitlement in the tarot community. Humans, like that's right. It sucks. Like, yeah, um, we're not just a, a machine, a tarot machine, just like, here is your reading. <laughs> it's like, say hello, like join the yeah. community, like hang out and chat. Like, I don't know. Like, and then if, if there, there's been a lot of times where like, I don't do exclamation, exclamation mark join on my, or any type of queue system like that. And when people come in and they're like, well, how do I get in the queue? And I'm like, well, you have to either subscribe or pay for it. And they're like, oh, okay, fine. I'll leave then or something like that. And it's just like, it's so that's where the entitlement comes in of like you just expect this for free like you don't get this from any yeah. you don't get any twitch, twitch is streamer. really the only free place that people get a, essentially a free private reading right a like um reading. a one-on-one -on -one. like even on youtube and um any sort of like video creation tiktok right most of the time the readings are for the collective or like a pick a pick a card out of the one two three right um it's for it's scalable. Uh, whereas Twitch, it is expected to get like a, a private reading essentially for mm. free right away. Right. And just like, like Crowdad is saying in chat, like this is a, the hardest part about Twitch. You entertain for free and you have to dance like a monkey hoping for a tip. Yeah. Like literally like it's, it's really exhausting. And that's why I think it's, for me, it's feeling a lot better to be doing these study sessions where we're focused on tarot. So I'm still creating a community around tarot, which is a passion and interest that I have and I, what I would like to build space around, a community space around. Um, but there's no expectation of free emotional labor from me. It's yeah. just, hey, we're reading a Wikipedia, a Wikipedia article together and then deep diving like Hathor or whatever in Egyptian mythology. Like, mm -hmm. and that's what, that's what you get from me. And you know, there might be a bonus maybe at the end of the stream. I'm like, you know what? Anybody want a tarot card? Like it, maybe that happens and that's like magical and fun. And that's how I want it to be for me. Um, but it isn't, uh, I don't know. Um, it's hard to, it's it's hard okay like like analytically speaking like when i stopped streaming tarot and reading tarot my view count dropped by over 50 percent um and that sucked like i don't know how else to say it even doing tarot related category or content is still like okay cool my only value is when i am emotionally siphoning myself mm -hmm. and destroying my my emotional like balance yeah it, that's energetically only, and yeah. um emotionally draining right and mentally draining too yeah. And then to see that it, so it's, you know, I just have to build like a different audience and it's fine. It's the, that's, that's what happens when you, when you switch up your content and stuff. But, um, I get that logically, emotionally, I'm still feeling a type of way, but, uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess there's, uh, I have like, I guess I have some great, I've been, I've been around like the magical online community for, um, six years now, I guess, 2015, seven. 2015 is about the time I started kind of like diving into it. And the there's there's quite a bit of entitlement from the consumers and there's quite a bit of gatekeeping from the quote experts of the category or of the top of not just on Twitch, but just in general. Um, don't even get me started on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I won't start on TikTok. I me and TikTok do not get along right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> But yeah, so um, I think we're going to, I have like one last question regarding like Twitch and tarot sure. and perfect timing tarot and things in chat says that they're about to start their Twitch tarot journey. So if you could give some basic advice to someone looking to start sharing tarot and spirituality on Twitch or the internet in general, what would your, what would your advice be? Boundaries. 
I think that's going to be my answer for a long time. But what I, what I mean when I say that is um, what has helped me a lot is like, I'm starting to do tarot again on my channel. And when I, when I go into my tarot streams, I'm like, I have space to read tarot for five people and that's it. Um, and I flexed up to six one time so far, but five is my cutoff. That is my limit. That is my boundary. I know that I can emotionally handle, uh, giving that much energy away. Um, and then I need, uh, to spend the next couple of days, like refilling that energy so that when I do my next tarot stream, I can do another five readings. So that's one boundary, knowing what your limits are as far as don't go into it and just be like, I'll read tarot until nobody's in the line anymore. And I guess the other thing I would say is like, that's, that's assuming that you have an audience that is demanding the readings, demanding the product from you. Um, if you're starting from scratch, expect there to be nobody that wants a reading from you for a while. Um, and that's totally fine. That doesn't mean you're not a good reader. That means you got to build your business up. Um, so what I would recommend is to go into your streams uh, with an intention. So I'm going to stream tarot and I might not have anyone that wants to join the queue, but I'm going to do a collective reading. Um, you could just do one collective reading. I like to start my streams with a collective reading to kind of clear the air um, and prepare to start to do individual focus stuff. But uh, you could do a one-off collective reading. Maybe that takes you 10 minutes. Maybe it takes you 30 minutes. It depends on your style of reading. Um, if you could stretch it out long, that would be good. How can you make it into like a 20 minute, you know, this here's your weekly check-in for the Taurus energy coming up, like tarot reading. Or you could do a pick a card. Um, so you could have three different sets on your in front of you with like, you know, like Panthera does, the acorn, the feather, and the the fossil. And you go through each of those spreads and then you have a video afterwards. It's like someone can there's rewatch value in that VOD. They can yeah. click on they can open it up and say, Oh, I liked that middle stack and I'm gonna skip to the middle stack section or you know, all three of those readings could provide value to a different person. Um, yeah, the YouTube fun. video done pretty much mm -hmm. from the beginning of that stream too if you're it's if you're done in a that. general way um so or uh or do a tarot deck flip through if you don't want to do a reading like that until you have a person to focus on um do a tarot deck flip through or talk about like talk about a tarot card in specific and why it's your favorite tarot card you can't just sit there twiddling your thumbs and waiting for someone to come to you you have to when someone clicks on your stream this is the same thing i'd say to a video game streamer too like you have to be, you have to, what, you gotta let them sample the product. What mm -hmm. are they getting? So when someone comes into your Minecraft stream and you're sitting there and you're not talking until someone talks to you in chat, they're not getting to see what, what they would get to interact with. So you have to be like narrating out loud the whole time and like showing your personality, expressing who you are and what the vibe is, what the energy is, what the interaction would be like. That way someone would be incentivized to start talking to you. And the same thing is true with tarot. You have to be showing your style of reading. Like maybe you're a very blunt tarot reader and you're like, you pull the, the tower card and your way of reading the tower card to someone is like, damn bitch, get your shit together. And that's going to <laughs> To immediately turn someone off or light someone up mm -hmm. they can tell by the way that you frame or that you pull the tower card and your first thing you say is like oh my dear you really are going through it and i send you all my love like there's so mm -hmm. so different like one is like oh this sweet nurturing gentle kind and the other is like hard hitting like damn they tell it how it yeah. is they say they, they speak they they have this like true shit instead of like this soft pussy footing around but mm -hmm. some people need the soft and some people need the hard and showing how you read is going to show if someone should you know interact with you or not or like try to invest and get a reading from you so, so now i'm a little curious what would you consider to be your style of, like how would you deliver a I'm tower a card, a tower <laughs> card I, like usually when i pull the tower or like the ten of swords or um one of these cards i'm always like Oh no! I, know, <laughs> like, I do that. Usually, the Ooh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's usually I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh, the tower. Oh, okay, <laughs> like that's. I, it's usually like a type of because it's like, oh god, the ten. We got the two of cups reversed and the ten of swords and the tower and Ooh. death reversed. <laughs> holy moly <laughs> like that i think Buckle that's a buttercup like, <laughs> yeah it's like lord you gotta somebody's gotta tell you to like walk away because you are not like so i i'm a little i think i'm a little bit of both i think that i mm -hmm. i it's like straight to the point sometimes and i'll like very you know kind of bluntly and but i try to do it in a cute light-hearted um 
gentle way. I, I it, but sometimes it's not gentle. So, yeah. But but, it, sometimes but a it's lot of times tough it love, is. Right? Yeah, it's like a it's like a sweet tough love is how I would describe my approach to teaching anything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we had a question from Violet Hummingbird. Oh, but what are your thoughts on the tarot community on YouTube? I know you've done some uh like <laughs> More Y'all are trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> uh, my thoughts on YouTube. Um, I think that uh, it's this, it's kind of the same things that I've talked about. I think that there's a lot of clickbaiting um, that can be. Uh, this is just YouTube culture in general. Same with TikTok yeah. culture. Um, there's a lot of um, catastrophic uh, clickbaiting kind of words that are used to, you know trigger people into clicking your videos, which I think for people who are emotionally vulnerable, um, which is a lot of times what people who need tarot readings are, um, I don't really like that. Um, but I also understand the YouTube algorithm and I'm not going to fault people for hustling the hustle, but, uh, I, and there's a lot of, um, I don't know. And maybe this depends on the individual, but I do find that the, the, the witchy community on YouTube is, um, damn, they really think they're the smartest bitches. <laughs> they really think that they are like the end all be all. They like what they say goes mm. generally speaking. And I'm not, I'm not even imagining an individual right now. It's just like the seven years of a consuming this very media. like my way or the highway. Like, uh, yeah. Kind of thinking. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, a uh, a lot of, um, not ever, like I, I'm friends with a lot of people that do witchy content on YouTube and are pretty popular creators. But <laughs> by the way, guys, quick plug: I make witchy content on YouTube. I'm gonna pop that link in the chat. <laughs> if you're watching this later on YouTube, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm friends with a lot of people that do it a lot. Like I've, I've networked quite a bit in that that category um, on YouTube, and um, there's there's some people that are uh, pure intentions, and there's other people that are ego made. Maniacs. And it's kind of like this like intense ego I'm talking about where like, like how I say I'm a, like this, this fear I have of being put into a box because then I'm going to be told that I'm practicing incorrectly it comes from a lot of yeah. these um, these larger people or people that build a, build a position of authority in this, this area, this topic. And then, you know, oh, you have an altar, but you don't have your, what's it called? An athema. You don't have your (laughs) athema pointed Northwest to the setting sun. You're doing it wrong. Like, shut the fuck up yeah, it's like, maybe i just don't <laughs> follow the up. same guidelines maybe i don't want you. a knife yeah. uh, in, in grabbing value and grabbing area because i got a toddler running around do you know what i mean like there's there, there's no wrong or right way to quote practice this type of stuff and that is that that's what i think frustrates me is that people act like there is a um an answer a, a definitive answer to how to be spiritual and then they mm-hmm. stand on their platform and create kind of a cult following around them and that cult audience will go and attack other people because it's like well so and so said that you're not supposed to read tarot unless you were gifted the tarot deck by someone you can't buy your own tarot deck or else it's not really infused with any type of magic so all of your tarot readings are inval- uh, invalid at this point like that type of gatekeeping mentality i think is really pushed in some of these youtube creators um and it doesn't necessarily have to be as like blunt as someone makes a youtube video called if you don't get gifted a tarot deck it, it's subtle it's like subtle yeah pro- practices it's and processes the comments. it's just in like it yeah. may not be like the the main point of the video but it's mentioned several times and so on yeah this happens everywhere because i'm also like pretty active in the twitch tutorial uh like the the twitch teaching like cat and the gatekeeping happens there too the people that think it's like you know their way that's why i'm trying to be really careful with like I like a starting soon screen, but it doesn't have to be for everybody. I like to do it like this, but you don't have to. My opinion is yeah. that this is the a, a great way to practice this. This is a great, like, this is, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I, I don't like to make people feel like it's the only way to do stuff because there's mm-hmm. so many ways to do things. Absolutely. So- and I think that's one of the reasons, too, why, like, um, specifically, like, spirituality is a growing community right now in general specifically witchcraft community is growing a lot and i think a lot of us are drawn to this including myself um to get away from the the rules of our more modern religions essentially right of the you have to be this way or else right Mm. like that's why this is so 
Um, I, at least why witchcraft drew me to the first place is like, wow, this is something where I can experiment and do my own thing and really just like practice what works for me. Right. And if it does, you know, what works for me might not work for you. And that's perfectly fine. Right. Because we're two different individuals. We have two different lives. We have two different hmm. sets of beliefs and that's, is what it is. Right. It's not a one size fits all I know, kind of but thing. That's what I value is like, I don't want to be around people yeah. that are just like the same as me. Like exactly. I want to be inspired by people that, yeah, I want us to have a common ground, but I, I would like there to be variety. I want We're to different be and that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I'm feeling like I'm kind of a critical person. I apologize for that. Maybe I am. I'm also pretty cynical and jaded at this point in, in my internet existence, but, uh, um, I think there's there's one more thing that I want to say about like the spiritual community in general when it comes to the internet and also just in the world. But if like my opinion, if somebody says that they have exclusive insight from some kind of like fifth dimensional alien or uh, an angel or something, and they're the only ones that has this link and connection to this and and that run, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally like run the other way. <laughs> um, that that is that is I think a probably why the witchy community will sometimes get a bad name too is that stuff like that does i'm the only one that can can psychically link with this alien from this venusian planet from a different dimension and it's like okay sure jan um not to say that i disbelieve in like psychic communication or anything like that but like when somebody uses that as their credential like or, yeah and yes then then that is an issue like that that is that that we're getting into like scary um what what heaven's gate cult area a cult realm where like oh yeah the angel by the way told me that everyone needs to uh uh control out delete themselves by this date or else you're not going to make it into the next dimensional realm you're not going to ascend to the seventh dimension like run <laughs> okay like legit so <laughs> anyway <laughs> that's the last like critical thing i think i want to say that's not something i really see a lot and it's usually with like more um uh outliers of like they're not people that are ever like real there's no if there was like an individual that i was thinking of i would probably not on pantheras channel of course but i would probably make some kind of public criticism of like whoa this is dangerous okay can we not like there there's not like an individual that i'm yeah. thinking of i'm just kind of like basing that on like my research well, mentality in general and, has been yeah. very predominant in the occult sphere for years and years and years and it's definitely something that as this becomes more popular right to um please be wary of especially if you're looking for covenant meetups groups in your yeah. area right like please be safe please vet people as much as you possibly can before ever 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 meeting up with somebody in person right um public events is a little different but as always like be safe right if people um, like want people so desperately to belong here. to a group that they're they'll compromise a lot of things and um yeah it's it it I, not that like yeah i guess that's just like a larger spirituality like um thing in general but but things like spirituality are used very often to control large groups of people yes. so just be very discerning i guess is like the thing but okay yeah. so i think we're gonna on a little more of a lighter note what's I your know, favorite Pantera tarot deck no this is great i love it and i i love that you're you don't shy away from these more difficult topics and i think that especially as both of us being educators in this sphere of influence it's very important for us to to talk about it and to to warn right uh to be honest and open with uh with our communities and um a lot of people go into this and I'm a very naive person too, right? And I'd like to mm -hmm. think that everybody means the best, and but that is definitely not the the case at all, right? Yeah, there's all there's there's some there's some wolves around always. It doesn't matter what niche or genre yes. or category you find you're in. Yeah, find yourself in. But yeah. So, what is your favorite tarot deck? <laughs> oh, this is very light. Um... <laughs> Currently, I really love the Lightseer's Tarot. The mm -hmm. Lightseer's, uh, that's my favorite because I have never um, been able to look at a court card and intuitively understand their energy. Um, and the way that the Lightseer's is drawn um, is like the King of Cups looks so different from the King of yeah. Swords. And I'm like, wow, I understand like what kind of daddy you are and what kind of daddy you are. <laughs> I got it. Okay. I know exactly what this one would say to me, how this one would criticize me. I know what this one would expect of me. Um, I, 
it's very with like the Rider Waite Smith, they all just kind of look the same to me. And unless you understand the difference of a salamander compared to the pebbles or something, like you're not really gonna get the difference in the behavior. Yeah. But yeah, I highly recommend Light Sears. Um and yeah, Panther has done a, a flip through of it on her channel. Um <laughs> Yeah, if you guys are uh, checking it out here, I do the full flip through as well as my um, review on the cards or my first impression of the cards. And then I do a deck interview spread as well, too. If you are watching this after the fact on YouTube, it should be linked somewhere over there. I also <laughs> am just like, I, I probably have to say Rider Waite Smith um, because that is something I'm so deeply studying and I'm about to know these cards so well, um, I could draw them in my sleep. Like, I, the Rider Waite Smith, I think, is. Compared to some older tarot decks, like what Rider Waite Smith only came around in like the early 1900s, right? Yeah. Um, or late, eight, yeah, early 1900s. So I there's think a it lot was of early 1900s, yeah. There's a lot of tarot decks that existed before. Um, and I like even just in like the, the studying that I've been doing, I'm like, whoa like these old tarot like the old fool the old versions of the fool don't some of them don't have the dog like they have different animals and so there's like like the crocodile approach instead of a dog approach is, is pretty interesting too but some of them are just, you know so it, it, even looking at like the older decks the more like the longer you know in circulation decks i'm like rider white smith is on a next level like mm -hmm. it's and it really is like an incorporation of a lot of I mean, it's my favorite kind of stuff. It's combining the all of these ancient mythologies, um, astrology as well, and then just the the general tarot uh, imagery, the tarot like structure. I guess we'll say the major, minor, arcana, and um, so I I do love the Rider Waite Smith, but stylized decks. Like if you're okay with like stepping away from the the the. I guess like mainstream uh, imagery of the the archetypal imagery of the cards. The Light Sears is really great. And um, uh, let's see, Oracle decks. Hmm. I don't know if there's one off the top of my head that's like my favorite right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because you usually pull from a bunch of different Oracle cards at the same time, yeah. right? Like you pull... Well, it's cool because I'll have like a self-care card that comes out. I'll have like a moonology card. So it's like pull in this energy of the moon and make sure you make yourself a nice meal. And then I'll get you a nice little mindful message over here. Here's a little like affirmation you can tell yourself every day. And all of this is circling around the hermit card and the two of uh, the two yeah. swords. And it's well so rounded. So it's, it's like, like a I can four course meal. <laughs> yeah. I, with, I feel like with, with traditional tarot cards, I can understand your situation. I know the physical situation that's happening and some of the spiritual stuff that you're going through. Um, and with the Oracle cards, I know the, um, desserts that you need to like, or the, the breath mint that you need after uh -huh. the meal. Like I know like you're, you're struggling going through a breakup right now and you need to be told that you're a strong person. Or as compared, like that's what the, the the oracle is coming into. To this person really needs to be encouraged about their own individual strength. As compared to like maybe another one is like it's okay to fail. Like uh, like maybe they need to be a, a like okay like made to feel okay about the failure of this. So the oracle cards kind of give me a direction of where to emotionally nurture the person, and the yeah. tarot cards tell me what the structure and situation is. That's gotcha. why so I it's like, like the doing... story, and then the like okay, now do this. Where's, what is the actual, yeah, what is the actionable? Yeah. What, what do they need the, the emotional support around as compared to just what is the situation that they're mm -hmm. experiencing? Yeah. So, I like yeah. that. Very cool. I think my favorite decks uh, would have to be, I'm always a sucker for the wild unknown. I think it'll yeah. always be one of my favorites. I just love the like. You're such an animal person. Yeah. I <laughs> I like the Light Seer's Tarot a lot. That's the first uh, human, de <laughs> human deck um, that I've been drawn to in a long time. Um, but I just love the nature imagery so much. I love the the stark black and white line work. I like the the directions of the flow of the line work. I like the specific chosen animals for different cards. And then there's also just like um, the the patterns of nature, like the the branches of a tree crossing versus like pointing in a direction, right? Like I just I love that like aspect of that mm -hmm. deck so much. Yeah. Um, and then I really love my Adventures Tarot Empress Edition. It's I use it as an Oracle deck, um, but it's my D and D kind of fantasy oh, archetype yes. deck, and it's such it's so bold good. colors. It's got the gold, uh, flashy metallic line work. Oh, it's so amazing! It, it's just beautiful. 
Um, I personally think it works a little better as an oracle than a tarot deck. So that's how I like to use it. It's like, what fantasy archetype do you need to like embody right now? Mm. Like, do you need to be mm. like a fighter or a barbarian? Or do you need to like be a druid or like a wizard, right? Like they, each of those kind of archetypes has our own like mental um, uh, persona that we attach to mm-hmm. them, right? Like mm-hmm. we, we immediately like think, okay, bard, like that gives you a whole different like image than a rogue, right? Uh, I love it so much. Yeah, those those are probably my top two favorites right now. So <laughs> it's kind of like getting into some uh, like wrap ups and future plans. Do you want to tell us like a little more? I know we've talked about this a lot. Um, anything that you would like to tell us about your weekly esoteric deep dive midnight study? I'm sesh? obsessed with that. I keep talking about it. I'm sorry. I'm so no, proud you're of fine. It. I feel like I've been working up to do this like my whole life. Like I'm, I'm thinking about who I was as a teenager and how it was like, everyone come over to my house. We're going to have a slumber party and we're going to talk about a, like, we're going to watch all of our anime movies. And then as we're all tucked in to our sleeping bags, I'm going to be like, do y'all believe in aliens? <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to have an hour long conversation with the lights out where we're talking about our, our, did you ever see a UFO and what, it, like it, it's, it's this kind of like far out mm. conversational space, I guess. And it's a little more cerebral than I, I'm, I, I was kind of hoping it would be, I guess. Like, I feel like it's like, even for me, I'm like, okay, this is like dull. Like, it's like when I was reading, um, oh, what is the name of that book? Um, Secret Teachings of All Ages, right? Mm-hmm. This one, which is a Manly P. Hall book, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, Manly P. Hall. So Secret Teachings of All Ages. It's like when I got this book and I was like, I'm about to understand all of the secrets <laughs> of the universe. And then like reading it, it's like the most like, so boring i feel like i'm reading like a (laughs) like a fifth year college level this person has never told a joke in their life like it's so cerebral to the point where it's undigestible and that's how some of this research that i'm doing right now has been actually i probably need to look through this book now that i'm doing the night study session because (laughs) this is like would you recommend that book Yes. Yes, I would. If you are interested in in esoterica and deep diving, like occult symbols and like Freemasonry or whatever, like all of that. kind, Yeah, absolutely would recommend it. Um, I got it on Amazon. uh, So but it was a used version. That's why it's beat up here. So it's like I think it's like out of print or something. So it's like a little expensive. But because it got it's beat up in the corner, I got a used version. I got it for like thirty dollars or something instead of like a hundred. So yeah, find yourself a beat up copy. It doesn't I, I like <laughs> used things. I think that they've got really cool energy in yeah. them. But um anyway, uh so there's I'm trying to I I want to try to bring it out of like the cerebral areas and kind of make it a little bit more fun. That's why I liked like la- this week's episode. We started kind of looking into Disney characters and how they associated with with tarot archetypes and stuff. So I was like, okay, this is bringing it to a mainstream digestible area where everybody can kind of understand the archetype of Aladdin. So they're going to understand this tarot card by understanding Aladdin yeah. as compared to filling out all of these huge, like five years of college level vocabulary words about uh, who Hathor, the goddess of Egypt is and her impact on uh, feminine archetypes throughout it. Like it's so like, even just like trying to put it into those like, like types of, it's just like, oh, ho hum, boring, like snooze, hot snooze, hot snooze. <laughs> like it's so, um, the book is called Secret Teachings of All Ages for the person in chat that was asking. Um, Secret Teachings of All Ages. It doesn't always look like this. This is like a some kind of, some edition that is a pe- paperback and blue. It looks different, sometimes hardback. Um, and I also have like a large, like a large version, but I like it too because it's, um, this is my favorite kind of book, but it's, uh, a lot of pictures it's like an encyclopedia so it's not just like a bunch of like snoozeville words it's a bunch of diagrams and things it's kind of like a textbook is what it it looks like yeah it is like a textbook yes so i i appreciate it for that um so yeah uh but yeah midnight study sesh is intended to be a deep dive of occult esoterica and paranormal phenomena uh i may or may not incorporate true crime into it i'm still not really sure i know i'm deeply fascinated by true crime and like cults and stuff like that so i don't know if it'll be appropriate but i also feel like it might be like midnight study sesh could imply anything so that's what i love about the title of it we could we could research anything um and 
but the in, the intention is to start with the tarot cards and break them down one by one, which if we're doing one episode a week, 78 tarot cards, I'm set for almost two years. Yeah. Really. Um, <laughs> so I also don't think that's going to work for me because I think like, like I'm already starting to feel a little bored. So I'm like, okay, I gotta, it's because it's been four weeks variety. and I've been studying tarot cards deeply for four weeks now. And I'm like, okay, can we look at Bigfoot now? <laughs> Can we just like dig into Bigfoot for like a couple of weeks? And I have to be able to like fluid on like move around and change topics because that's just the Gemini way. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, my, my future plans with it, I'm going to wrap up the high priestess, which we were looking at this week. Um, I might, I might, or I might take a break with her because I'm, I'm not super hooked. Even this week's episode, I was like ready for the, I was ready for the stream to be over, which is a bad sign. So, um, I think that I need to take a break to catch up with myself on the fool and the magician. Cause there's a couple of like uh, supplementary content I want to make to go around the research. Um, and I think I need to branch into something that's a little lighthearted and fun. Um, so, uh, so yeah, something, something you I can don't really dive into for a little bit and just, I don't know relax. if I'll do Bigfoot, but, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe something like that. Maybe mm-hmm. something, even a just like in general or a cryptid or like studying the national parks of America and, Ooh. and mythology <laughs> or like folklore around the national parks, like something like that. Um, just to kind of like have, you know, like deep that would dive be a weird. great one, especially with like yeah. summer coming up and travel more traveling. Coming. Yeah. That would be a very yeah. good timely episode. Let's look at the grand Canyon and, and read about folklore and cryptids that are found around the grand Canyon, you know, like yeah. stuff like that. Like I like have, have a couple of weeks where I kind of branch away from the, the esoterica and go into like, like I, the paranormal or the cryptids and stuff. So yeah, I'm very excited for, um, um, if you, that's the thing is DCD fused. I don't think I can properly get through one tarot card in one stream. There's so, I'm mean, just so looking at the full. <laughs> There's so many little details that take us down these wild rabbit holes. So like one episode of the pie priestess card was spent basically on Persephone and Hades. Um, and just trying to understand the, the lore behind Persephone and Hades and, uh, Persephone's mom, uh, Demeter, I think now Demeter and Zeus and how, and, and Persephone is the, the, you know, when, when you call Persephone, you're actually summoning death, but death is another entity called Thanatos and like, I need to understand all of these different figures. And why do we even care about Persephone? Because there's a pomegranate on the background (laughs) of the high priestess card. A pomegranate has led us down this rabbit hole. And this is what I was saying with like, why I like the light seers Oracle or the light seers tarot is I don't, when you look at like the King of Wands in tarot, there's salamanders everywhere. He's got, he's got, he's covered in a, a a robe with salamanders on it. And he has a salamander, like, like critter walking around the card. You have to understand the symbolism of the salamander to understand what traits that is bringing on out of the King of Wands. Yes. And with the Light Seer's Tarot, I can just look at his facial expression and his body language and the colors of his shirts and the fact that he's more muscled than the King of Cups. And like, I understand so much. Their without- body positioning too is like yes. so well done without having to know anything about a salamander. Um, and so it's like with the high priestess, I need to understand the the significance of a pomegranate. It was a great episode. I did love it. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Like, uh, But I need to understand the significance of a pomegranate. And a pomegranate is related to Persephone because she ate one in, in the underworld. And then we're digging into the pomegranate and the symbolism of that throughout history and how it's been used, you know, it all of this different stuff. And then that's just one piece of the high priestess card and by the end of the episode we were starting to look at her headdress which was linked with hathor which is an egyptian goddess and then so that's a whole other two hour dive of like who is hathor (laughs) why does she have this headdress what is her mythology what does she represent and understanding her like it's like we're spider webbing into to all of these different sub genres of esoterica throughout all of history yeah so with the fool we looked at apollo in like Greek and Roman mythology. And in the magician, we looked at Hermes and in the uh, high priestess, we're looking at Persephone. So I'm getting these little branches of Greek and Roman mythology. And by the end of all of the tarot, I should understand the full map of Greek and Roman mythology. And it's the same thing with, um, 
like the tree of life or the Kabbalah, like all of the different Sephiroths, Sephiroths of the tree of life and like the like Kether and Bina and all of these things, which are very, like very esoteric and very, yeah, cerebral, right now very you're big like, oh, like I was with you on the Greek of it's, <laughs> Egyptian it's literally mythology another and language. Like, what? But the thing <laughs> is that they all link up. Yeah. So the fool is Apollo, the light God, and is also Kether, the crown of the tree of life. Those, those are now in my head through this research, those are connected. The, the, the web has been connected there. Yeah. And so like the high priestess and Persephone would link to a different part of the tree of life. And that mythology and the archetypes are now locked in. And I'm mm. understanding the flow of the tree of life, the flow of the Kundalini energy, the flow of the chakra system, like by understanding the archetypes in mythology and these mythological look y'all got me like really lit up right now but those <laughs> mythological characters throughout history are now being incorporated in mainstream media that we're all consuming ignorantly every day right that's where i'll stop there <laughs> <laughs> No, this is great. And uh, real quick, I'm just going to do like a little plug for you. But uh, Shady is putting all of this information together specifically with the tarot cards onto blog posts on her website. So if you're interested in this and you want it pre-done notes, ready to go, pin those images, right? Get it done. Um, it is in the Twitch chat right now. I'm literally if you're watching like Charlie, right? That's like, and, and it's all connected over here. Like, <laughs> this, yeah, because like, even your mind maps are on there, right? Which yeah. is very... <laughs> Yeah, and if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be down in the description below as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely check back. I think the Fool's will, the one you have right now, right? But that'll be updated um, over time as you go through each of the cards, correct? Yes. Awesome. Yes, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. It's been my favorite, like, oh, Wednesday night, gotta, like, write it down. Like, I'm happy. Study yeah. sesh, so fun. <laughs> I highly recommend, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, I'm gonna plug... Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Shady's yeah, like in the I'm very, um, it's, it's been a good anchor for me and it's like mm -hmm. getting me back to my roots too. So. Yeah. The um, Ouroboros, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like all connected. <laughs> I love the, the one sentence I saw about the Ouroboros was every idea contains its own ending. Ooh. And I thought that that was like very like poetic, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Oh, so this is so much fun. So I, um, I think the last two questions I have, which we'll do the first one. These are arguably the most important questions of the night. What okay. is your favorite animal? And what's oh. your favorite plant? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, plants, I probably won't have a good answer for. Oh, no, I do. Honeysuckle. Oh. Um, My boyfriend didn't know what honeysuckles were. I guess they don't what? have them in Ohio. Oh, yeah, I guess honeysuckles are probably regional, but they're very mm -hmm. small. They smell sweet. Yeah. I can smell them across. I, I can I tell. used to go pick them, and you can, like, pull the bottoms out and get the, the nectar. Yeah. Yes. You, pop, you, pull, you pick the flower, and you pop the little bottom, and you pull the stamen through, or the, the little, I think it's called mm -hmm. a stamen, and the little bud at the end of the stamen pulls the nectar down through the tube yeah. of the flower, and then you get to just, like, it's so yummy. I, would, I would literally go collect, like, 50, 100 mm -hmm. of them and just... I used to like tell my parents like that I wanted to have a honeysuckle farm where I would just like sell yeah. it in jars. <laughs> that so would have taken forever. It but... probably tastes really good is like uh, if you collected enough of it and you use it as the syrup for like your tea or something, oh, it would probably be really nice. Yummy. I can oh. smell. We could be driving with the windows down and like stop the car. There's a honeysuckle bush. I can mm -hmm. smell it. Like yeah. And, and then we'll like look around and they're like, "There's no honeysuckle bush." And then I'm like, "There, across the way, <laughs> hidden between those two trees, I see them." Like mm -hmm. the 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 aroma of a honeysuckle bush is like very. Yeah, it's very like, noticeable. Pointed. The yeah. smell of honeysuckle is amazing. And so, uh, what's your favorite animal then? Probably probably I want to say a fox that's my knee-jerk reaction because I I just love foxes I think they're so cute and adorable and crafty and and I love the imagery of them the the design of them the long yeah. snout the small pointy ears the big bushy tail um the dainty little toes they're like a mixture of a cat and a dog mm -hmm. um I love them uh, but I also feel like owls Ooh. Um, and I didn't think an owl was my favorite until recently when I'm like, I'm surrounded by owls. Like yeah. I've accidentally bought like an owl air fresh. When mom gave me an owl air freshener for my car, <laughs> I have this plate over here. My friend gifted me with an owl on it. My, my debit card, when I replaced my old one that had my, my cat who passed away. And I was like, I can't look at this anymore. I need a new debit card. And I was just like going through the, like 
the the all the, the images bank, they have the for bank you. <laughs> rebuilt images and i was like yeah the owl whatever i don't care like like because it had a nice purple background it was a pretty white snowy barn owl and so by the time i was like all you know a year or two had gone by i'm just like sitting in my car one day like waiting to pay for fast food and i've got my debit card in my hand i'm just like hitting it against the steering wheel and i'm like look and then i look up and i see the owl hanging from my rear view mirror i look at this debit card and then i think about how (laughs) i just like created a role in yeah like the, the discord server i run that was like the oh all seeing yeah owl or something for one of my owl. <laughs> and i was like i'm just owls are everywhere around me like so i feel like either they're like an animal that is here to teach me something right mm-hmm. now um but and I do they're love very them. like um wise, weird... very like mentor energy, hier- hierophant energy. And you lift their little dress up and they've got these weird long <laughs> leggies. Like the owls are so cool. Um so I yeah, I feel like owls and uh foxes. foxes. Right? Yeah. That's so yeah. interesting because two very like intelligent animals, but in two different ways. You've got like Apex a wise owl too. or predators. Yeah. Yep. Um and then you've got like the cunning trickster of the fox. You've got like the street smarts and then the like book smarts. Very interesting. Mm. Oh, that is like me. Yeah. yeah. I'm very street smart because I grew up as a street rat. Like <laughs> and then I'm like a deep diver with all of my like esoteric like like textbooks and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's a mixture of the 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 wily like like, yeah, you throw me out in the street and I got nothing, I'll make it. But mm-hmm. also, like, I can study anything. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to take it from there. All right. <laughs> well, thank you guys all so much for being here tonight. If you want to do, like, a final little plug, Shady, and I've got a raid target, I think, for us. Well, yeah, y'all can find me at Hey Shady Lady on everything, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch. Um, I also have a uh, Riff Raff Street Rat. <laughs> You can also find me at heyshadylady.com. I've just reinvigorated my blog and I'm starting to update it with, it's a bunch of lifestyle stuff and Twitch tutorials. Uh, and But it also includes like my esoteric deep dives that I'm doing. And um, I'm going to have, I'm going to start. Also, this is another thing that I'm te- to be throughout this year, but I've created a wellness section for my category where I'm going to be digging into um, like emotional uh, you know, well, wellness in general, but like, I want to talk a lot about like surviving gaslighting and abusive relationships and, um, things like that. So just kind of like discussing toxic energy and how to, how to overcome it, how to recognize it and how to get yourself out of that, but also self-care, how to take care of your, like how to love yourself and how to, um, all of, all of that kind of stuff. And then lifestyle content was going to follow like general lifestyle makeup hair beauty weight loss journey and all of that good stuff so that's my major focus is my website and all of the rest of my content is going to be spawning out of that um and yeah i guess my i'll be doing tarot on my stream once or twice a week we're doing the midnight study sesh esoteric deep dives and um and then i think it's either going to be like breath of the wild or minecraft so there's still some sandbox gaming floating around stardew valley for sure um floating around my channel so it's comfy cozy but also opening up your little skull cap and yeah. putting some weird information in there every now and again <laughs> so. oh, i love it so much <laughs> and yeah and if you guys uh were new here you found me during this stream i'm panthera and i'm the feral wood witch i'm mostly a tarot reader here on twitch i also make educational witchy content my newest video all about cleansing basics is available uh on my youtube channel there and if you want to keep up with me in between streams definitely check out our Feralwood discord where we do meetups talking about all kinds of if you like tarot you're gonna love it there if you like talking about witchy stuff you're gonna love it there um as well as following me on social media and i think we that probably we... mention celestial cafe oh yeah too. we both <laughs> do celestial cafe yeah, which is a once... once a month which might be more than once a month yeah so we're we're kind of we're kind of figuring out what we're gonna do with it but but at least once a month at the full moon a couple of days before the full moon me and panthera and two of our witchy friends dukesley and fuchsia meet up to discuss the energy of the full moon and how you can best work with it uh during that time um so that's been happening once a month but we might the next one will is is about three weeks away we just did our recent episode so i would guess the next one's going to be around the 18th or so Mm. of may that sounds Um, about right and uh yeah, but we may be adding um, a new rotating part of that series, uh, that show, but that will be to be discussed in the future. Yeah, um, so keep yeah. your eyes peeled. And that is on Shady's channel, which I'm going to put uh, Shady's link there in the chat once again. So if you aren't already following Hey Shady Lady, what are you doing? Get over there. 
Thank you for uh, having me on, Panther. This yeah, was of fun. course. Thank you for coming. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> I had a blast. Have a Bye, good everybody. one. Bye.